Welcome back to Social Media for Your Business. This is Victor Campos. So we've practiced with a little bit of tweeting. Remember, the goal is at least five tweets, so that you have some amount of content to show that you are a good account to follow. It's been a whole five minutes, and I don't have any followers yet. What's the big deal? Well, let's talk about some tactics to help us get followers. Some of these will work in a variety of ways for a variety of reasons, and it doesn't hurt to try as many as possible. So one tactic to get followers is for you to become a follower. So I'm getting some notifications on the side over here of accounts that I may, I may want to follow. Maybe I want to follow Drake. Maybe I want to follow the Chargers. Maybe I want to follow CNN, so I can click follow. All of these accounts will get a notification that I followed them, and they may follow back. Most likely not. So these notifications here about who to follow, really they're just for inspiration about what you should be sharing. Here's how you find regular old people. Search. Twitter search is one of the most important features that we will use to build followers. So let's say, Victor's Bakery. I'm gonna search for the keyword cookies. As I start to type, I get suggestions. I get search terms, hashtags, and accounts. I'm gonna ignore all of these for the moment. Simply type a keyword and click the search button or press enter. And I get the search result screen for the keyword cookies. It can be more than one word. I could have searched for chocolate chip cookies. A variety of then tweets appear all about cookies from big names, sonwal names, and everything in between. Now, hopefully nothing untoward appears here because this is a real live search. So, the, the result of a search here at the top, it gives me the option of top tweets, latest tweets, accounts with cookies in the name or description, photos about cookies, videos about cookies, and more. One reason why you may be looking under more is near you. If I'm a business on Main Street and I'm searching the keyword cookies near me, this could be people near my location that are interested about cookies that I could reach out to. So here I'm going to find a variety of content. Corina wrote, Love December because my mom makes fudge and almond butter crunch and peanut butter cookies. This was tweeted one minute ago by Corina. Corina seems to be interested in cookies. So if I hover over Corina's name, I get the icon to follow. One strategy for you to build followers is for you to become a follower. So if I follow Karina, she got a notification that says Victor's Bakery followed you. She may then follow me back. Let's see some more. Susan says, warm chocolate chip cookies, Christmas movies, and cuddling with my Nicholas. Heart, heart. So I'm going to follow Susan. Meech Lee says, I want some cookies and cream. Okay, I may hover there and follow. So I've just let three people on Twitter know that I exist. They may then take the plunge and follow me back. This is one strategy to get followers. I will say it's not the best strategy, but it is a possible strategy. 
Downsides of this strategy are, I've chosen to follow Corina, Susan, and Meech. That means I'm going to see their tweets on my home timeline. And again, hopefully I don't see anything untoward here. But I'm going to start to see their tweets on my home screen. I've invited them, and so I'm seeing their tweets. So a smarter way to follow is to first vet them, is to first check them out before the follow. Notice in the time that I've been talking, there have been 40 new tweets about cookies. So Dan wrote, how's this? I went to the last Jewish bakery in Rhode Island this weekend. The challah was mech, but the cookies were legit. Okay, well, I may want to follow, but perhaps what I should do first is simply click on their account so I can read their full bio there, read what they're tweeting about. And in this case, I'm mostly seeing a lot of political tweets, which I may or may not care about. So if I were to have followed this account simply from one tweet, that might not have been the best, because I'm going to see a lot of stuff I didn't really want to see, perhaps. Not that it's political, but what if it's about baking with very unhealthy ingredients. So the better strategy is to first check out the account before following. Melissa says, I had cookies for dinner and that's all that matters. Okay, well if I go look at her account, a little bit of info there, some graphics. So maybe this account might be fine to follow. You'll need to make the decision to decide about an account to follow. So I said previously that a follow is the highest level of interaction. But it may be too high. You may not want to follow a lot of accounts. The next levels of interaction are the icons found below a tweet. The safest way is to simply like. So one way to build followers is to let followers know you exist with a simple like. Emily says, I'm supposed to be reading and doing homework, but instead I am currently baking cookies. So, like. Emily got a notification. I had cookies for dinner. That's all that matters. Okay, Melissa, like. Nothing but all-nighters until the end of the semester. Well, she didn't mention anything about cookies in her tweet, but she has cookies in her name. So... This is another way to build followers. This way also is not the best. And I'm not uh, trying to do sort of like a guide you in the wrong direction. I'm just giving you a variety of possible scenarios on how to build followers. There's not one way that always works. It just depends on so many factors. So let's say I wanted to engage in this particular tactic giving likes based on a topic. I want some brownies and real oatmeal raisin cookies. Hmm. So I give a like. AC has been alerted that I exist. Worst case scenario, AC moves on with her life and never pays attention to me. Best case scenario, she follows me. Perhaps more realistically, she likes one of my tweets. She retweets one of my tweets. She replies to one of my tweets. So let's say we wanted to take this to the next level. We've got a retweet. If I click there, this will copy AC's tweet and send it to my followers, giving her credit. I can simply click, click retweet and her tweet goes off into my timeline and my followers would see it. I can also add a comment. I would recommend to always add a comment, simply not a retweet, but add a comment. What do you add to the tweet? How do you improve upon the original tweet? How do you entice the original tweeter to also further interact with you? So I'm going to say here, just in luck, 
we bake the best oatmeal raisin cookies. Our grandma taught us how. I'm not trying to sell her our cookies. I'm not trying to sell my followers cookies. I'm trying to build community. I'm trying to get her to follow me. She may buy my cookies later, but for the moment, I'm just trying to build followers. It might help if I spell things right. Oatmeal raisin. Okay, so I'm going to tweet that. AC got another notification that says Victor's Bakery retweeted you. Be careful about doing too many of these interactions with one person. Then it becomes a little spammy. Sav says, I would like, I would give a limb for McDonald's cookie. All right, so I retweeted that. And if I were to go look at my profile, if anyone else were to go look at my profile, they would see that my original tweets have been made and they would see that I've retweeted AC's tweet and added my own to it. All right, here's another level of interaction. The reply. I would give a limb for McDonald's cookies right now. I'm going to reply. The reply is a tweet that's focused to that person, whereas a retweet you saw will be visible by everyone. If they visit my home... If they visit my home screen... They will see my tweet. By default, people will only see the tweets that have been put out to everyone. If I reply to someone, then they'll see that reply. So it's not that whatever I reply to Sav will only be visible to Sav. If I click reply here, it's still public. It's just not obviously public. If I wanted a completely private conversation, that's when I would begin a direct message. I'm going to reply. Notice how it automatically wrote Sav's username for me. And again, a full name can be one thing and a username can be another. She probably wanted Sav, but she had to settle for SXVanna. So I'm going to say, don't use that limb instead to buy, to get one of our cookies. They're 10 times tastier and don't cost an arm and a leg. To further the humor, I can add some emoji. Yes, I'm tweeting to random strangers. Yes, you'll need to do this. Yes, you'll be you'll need to be careful how you do this. I don't know if Sav is going to reply very negatively to me, such as who are you? Leave me alone. Spammer. I don't know. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. I would say, however, if you begin with positivity, you'll probably get positivity back. If you're sharing interesting, funny photos, relevant photos, if you're interacting in an interesting, funny, relevant way, if you're on topic, you'll probably get good results. I'm not going to lie, I have had instances where people reacted negatively, but it's been such a low percentage of times that I'm not worried about it for myself or clients. If there is a negative reaction... A reply that says, sorry, and moving on with your life is perfectly fine. This is not going to blow up into some epic social media meltdown if they took it bad, especially if you started it on a good foot. So I wrote something here, fun. I don't have a link to buy this cookie now. I could. I could easily have the link to buy our cookie. Maybe that's too strong to start off with. Again, trying to build a relationship. If you think this is a lot of work, well, think about marketing 1.0. What I'm doing on Twitter right here is marketing 2.0. 
Marketing 1.0 is the billboard on the highway. The ad on TV, the flyer on the windshield, the guy flipping that sign around pointing to your business. That's marketing in the classic way. This is marketing in the new way. And Marketing 1.0 also took a lot of effort and time and money. It was not free to put your billboard on the five. It was not free to print out those 1,000 flyers and put them on windshields. It would not... It was not free to have that guy stand on the corner flipping that sign pointing to your business. But what is free is a tweet, a Facebook post, a YouTube video, a Snapchat snap, a Pinterest pin. To start off with, all of those things are free. Yes, they can be supercharged if you pay, and that'll be a topic for later. But here, I'm reaching directly to a potential customer for free. I'm doing it in a positive way, trying to build a relationship, trying to get a follower, because when you build followers and you give them good free content, eventually, most of the time, they reward you with something, with a sale, with a subscription, with something. So the more followers you have, the more positive the more possibility of that ultimate result. I'm just trying to sell cupcakes. One tweet at a time. Sav got a notification that I exist. So I'm seeing a lot of people, of course, that are tweeting about that topic. And I can search any number of topics and reach real people. In the time I've been talking now, 271 more cookie tweets have appeared. Lol, why did I just make 45 cookies? All right, I'm going to reply to that and say something like, when you get the cookie baking virus, there's only one cure, baking cookies. With a little animated graphic, perhaps. Let's see if I can find Cookie Monster here. Yep, plenty of cookie monsters. That'll be just fine. I'm putting something funny on topic about cookies. Eventually, yes, I want to sell Sage some cookies, but I'm going to start off with perhaps getting, starting off with a like, with a retweet, with a reply or a follow, and eventually a sale. Sage got that notification. Worst case scenario, nothing happens. Best case scenario, I get a reply or some other form of interaction. There is the possibility that Sage may be so outraged that I dared to contact her that she goes to my profile and clicks the button that says block or mute or report. But in my experience, that has never happened if you are positive. Pax, cookie jar full of cookies. That's the best thing in the world and the worst thing in the world. Maybe an emoji or some other kind of graphic. Going back to my home screen, as I start to use Twitter, I'm going to start to get suggestions about who to follow, regular people now perhaps, up here as well, starting to build community. So this is one way to build followers. You are searching on topics and interacting directly with people that may care about your business, your brand, your organization, your nonprofit, etc. Another tactic to build followers is trends. I'm seeing here on the side these various trends at the moment. Now, I don't want to spoil anyone, so I will not click on the Walking Dead hashtag that's currently playing as I record this video, so I don't want to give that away for people. But there's other topics here that are also hot at the moment. Black Friday, for example. So if I click on a trend, 
This is just another way, sort of, to search. You're going to see top tweets regarding a topic, accounts regarding a topic, people tweeting on that topic. I can go look at the latest tweets on a topic. Remember that Twitter is global, so you may see tweets in different languages. You often then also have a translation. So these trends might not always relate to what your business is about, but keep an eye on them because if they do, take advantage of them. It shows that people are active on a topic. Let's say my business has a Black Friday sale this year. 20 more new tweets here. Jennifer says, Mad I'm getting paid after Black Friday and Cyber Monday are all already over. All right, so for Jennifer, I could say, You're in luck. Every day is Black Friday. at our online cookie shop. This is not a real website, but I am tweeting to a real person. Obviously, you want to do this for real with your own business, but because this is a testing account, Jennifer, it's okay that I'm tweeting to a real person. Something positive, it's on topic. I'm promoting myself, humor, if the voice of my business warrants it, I'll tweet. So, trends, you can go also to explore changing a trend. The default is that these trends are being tailored for me. Well, I can change it by clicking on change. And now I can say, okay, Give me trends based on a location. I want San Diego-based trends because my business is in San Diego. I can switch between different locations, but let's say San Diego will be my current trending location. So I'm getting some trends that spill over to the larger trends, but then I may get local trends that I can tap into. What's happening in Las Vegas? Trends are a little bit different here. If there's a trend that I can tap into, I should. Let's see about the Grey Cup. I usually like to go for the latest view. So if you can post on a particular trend, you should do so. Of course, be careful about wading into some trends. You don't want to post the wrong thing, depending on the trend. We've been trying to get followers by interacting with them directly. Another tactic to get followers is to interact with interactors. That means deal with people that are already being active. The Alton Brown tweet again, for example. If I click on that tweet, I will get a list of all of the people that have liked, retweeted, and replied to this tweet. All of these people most likely care about the topic of Alton Brown, which is cooking, baking, and such. Hey, my business is about cooking and baking. So Nina wrote something positive to Alton. So did Brandon. Maybe not Panther Lou here, but we can ignore him. So, Nina. It was wonderful. Thanks. Need to fix the Hamilton joke, though. And also, thank you. It was a great show on Saturday. Okay. So, we can reply to Brandon, for example. We can, we can favorite Brandon's tweet, retweet it, reply to it, or even follow him. I'm going to choose the reply because this is a higher level. The like is so transitory. It's not bad at all, but it's so transitory. You give a like, you move on what's next. To some degree as well, 
the retweet. It does help build your exposure, but you probably don't need to build the exposure of other people very much. So the reply is often going to be the best weapon to get more followers. The way this will work is, I'm interacting with someone that's already interacting. 24 minutes ago, Brandon was interacting with Alton. Alton, Alton is about cooking. I'm about cooking. My business is about cooking. So I'll reply. Automatically then, Brandon and Alton are added to this reply. Alton is being added to this conversation where he might not really need to be part of it, so you can easily remove people from a conversation. And oftentimes you should. If you're going to interact with the interactors, if you're going to use this tactic, remove other people from the conversation that you're not quite targeting. So to Brandon. I'm only replying to Brandon. Thinking in terms about the voice of the business, I could say, I wish I was there. But am I running this Twitter account of this business as a person or as a business? So if we had something like, we wish we could be there. Alton inspired us. Notice I'm not using at Alton Brown. This is not going to alert Alton that I mentioned him in a tweet. Alton inspired us to begin our baking odyssey. Okay, I'm saying something nice. I'm getting into the conversation. In a sense, I'm butting in on the conversation, but I'm doing it in a positive way related to the topic. This is another tactic to get followers. This is one of the tactics that I do recommend much more highly than the other ones. Don't go out blindly following people. That doesn't get you that many followers. Giving and giving and giving likes, that doesn't get you that many followers. Giving retweets, that doesn't give you that many followers. Giving replies, that gets you more followers if done consistently. And this next higher level, interacting with the interactors, could get you even more followers because you're on topic. It takes much more work, of course, because then you have to look at the tweets of people that are tweeting to find people that are tweeting to then tweet to those tweeters more work. But it could pay off in that Brandon becomes a follower, and when I tweet something tomorrow about a cupcake for sale, he may buy the cupcake, if all goes according to plan. What's also effective is to create open-ended replies. To the previous ones that I've done, they've been pretty closed. I want more open-ended replies, meaning I want to ask a question, lead the conversation, What's your favorite A-B recipe? Brandon may completely ignore me. Brandon may reply. Brandon may follow. Brandon may like. But I'm getting the ball rolling. Let's see if I find something else with Bon Appetit magazine. Bon Appetit wrote just a basic bulgogi recipe but in the good way. And then Raul wrote something, and so did Hooray. Raul is more positive than Hooray, so I will reply to Raul. There are plenty of original, authentic recipes online. I can't wait to try something new. So let's get Raul into a conversation. We don't need to keep Bon Appetit in the conversation. I'm trying to get Raul to follow me. The amazing thing about cooking slash baking is that everyone can try it and if you succeed it's a win-win for everyone smiley face maybe didn't have space for a follow-up question and so forth, but at least I have something positive here that hopefully gets the ball rolling. Raul tweeted this 11 minutes ago. Hopefully he's still up and follows up with me. 
A variation on this theme is to search on a topic and as I look at top results of cookies I start the process again. Cody Ryan has 11,000 followers. He tweeted about cookies. He's got interactions. Notice from this view I can see replies. For some reason Twitter doesn't show the number of replies from the main home screen, but it does show it when you're looking at results. So eight people have interacted here. That's going to then be a signal to me to let's check out the interactors that are interacting. I can click on the time of a tweet to see it completely. A lot of these people then are replying. And if I want to try to entice them to follow me, I'll continue on this topic. Molly. But all I can do is dream. So we'll say up here, Cody had said, baking cookies with someone I'm crazy for. Based on that idea, based on what Molly has said, now keeping in mind that she did write that an hour ago, she may or may not still be active or paying attention on Twitter. But I'm going to butt in on this conversation in a positive way. Oh, I dream about baking cookies when you can dream about eating cookies. We'll add another cookie monster graphic here. Tweet that. Rinse, repeat. Look at accounts like Land of Food. No replies at the moment there. This one has four replies. 11 replies. This was tweeted several hours ago and the people that had replied were a little while ago as well but i could i can i could continue the conversation so we're going to see here that there's not one magic solution to build followers it takes time and effort but the thing is that it's free to tweet to tweet as many times as i want i've already got 11 tweets now, I wouldn't quite count those for the ones that I was saying that I need to build. It's a process. I want to keep my eye out in the notifications bell here. A number will appear when someone has interacted to see if I've built followers. These sorts of tactics will also apply to the other social networks we'll talk about with some variations. On our next video, we'll also look at ways to see how effective we're being and strategies for building more followers. This has been Victor Campos.